Well, what do you know? I mean, it seems that someone talks some sense into a specific Samsung group of products. As yes, it looks like we're getting some significant changes in some departments for Samsung's next foldables, at least. We have new leaks that tell us what to expect from the upcoming iPad Pros, and Sony finally woke up and smelled the coffee when it comes to their Xbox Game Pass competitor. I'm Jaime Rivera, and wow, Sony, I mean, it seems your logical innovations take just as long as it took me to buy your game console. This is Pocket Now Daily. The official news today begin with Sony and PlayStation as yes, after months of leaks, the company officially announced that they will be revamping the PlayStation Plus service to take on Microsoft's very well marinated Xbox Game Pass. The way this works uh, will be that they'd be splitting it into three tiers, being Essential, Extra, and Premium, which each brings their own perks. Essential is uh, pretty much the same PlayStation Plus service you get right now with uh, two monthly downloads loadable games, discounts, and more, with the pricing remaining the same. Now, the extra tier brings a catalog of up to 400 games, including titles like God of War and the latest Spider-Mans, which can be downloaded for free starting at $15 a month and $99 a year. But finally, the premium tier offers all of the benefits mentioned before, but includes over 740 games, including games from the PSP and back all the way to the PS2, which sounds amazing. Oh, come on, man. PS1. This one starts at 18 bucks a month and uh, 120 if you go for the full year. And users would be able to stream games on PS4, PS5, and even PC. Apparently, these would start rolling out in June, starting in Asia and moving on to North America, Europe, and the rest of the world. I mean, I think it's a win-win, and the price tag is actually not that bad, but uh, let us know what you think. Let's switch gears onto foldables for the first time today, starting with Vivo. We've uh, seen a lot of leaks for the Vivo F Fold over the past few weeks, but now we have an official video. This phone features an inward folding design that resembles Samsung's Galaxy Z Fold, and it would bring a 2K plus display running at 120 hertz. It also has a similar outer display, but uh, when you turn it around, you get a quad camera array with a Zeiss branding, which we're assuming will make this device pretty thick considering the placement of the cameras. From the video, we can see that we have a main sensor, an ultra-wide, a periscopic telephoto, and we'll assume that the fourth sensor is a regular telephoto. On the positive side of it being thicker, rumors point to it bring a 4600 milliamp hour battery that would support 80 watt fast charging. This phone will also be powered by the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 SoC, which has been confirmed previously. So, uh, I mean, yeah, this phone will be announced apparently on April 11th. Uh, so let's see how it does in the market of foldables because it looks pretty good. Let's move on to Apple and the new iPad Pros. I mean, recently we got the M1 iPad Air, even if we thought that the M series would be exclusive to the Pros, but uh, now we're waiting on the next generation. We have a new report from Mark Gurman where he claims that the new generation of iPad Pros will be coming in the fall, sometime between September and November. And he goes as far as to say that this would be the wildest array of new hardware products in its history. He claims that these new models will feature Apple's M2 chip and MagSafe connectivity. Now, when it comes to the chip, these are expected to bring the same 8-core CPU that we got with the M1, but now with a 9 or 10-core GPU options, and it would also be built by TSMC's 3 nanometer process. Usually, Cupertino takes between 13 to 16 months to refresh the iPad Pro model, so it's kind of safe to say that we could see them arrive with the iPhone 14 series in September or probably October. Also, uh, notice how these rumors of wireless charging have been slowly fading away. Anyways, let's see what we get. And finally, for the hottest news today, let's move on to Samsung and their foldables. If you remember, we were confused when the company added the Z branding to the Z Fold and the Z Flip after the original model was simply dubbed the Galaxy Fold. Uh, now we have a new tweet from TechAlter noting that Samsung has removed the Z branding from both of these phones in certain countries in Europe. And the report mentions that at the moment, it can be confirmed that the letter no longer exists in at least three countries and that Samsung will continue to do so across all of their European pages in the coming days as well. Now, the thing about it is it appears to be something related 
related to what's currently going on in the Ukraine as Russia has been using the Z symbol on their equipment since the start of the invasion. I mean, honestly, I really appreciate if these are the genuine reasons why Samsung is doing it. But at the same time, I do also hope that it does translate to the rest of the world because I don't even know why they added the Z to the name in the first place. On another note, a new tweet from Ice Universe claims that the Fold 4 won't be getting much of a redesign to keep cost at a minimum unless they feel their market share has been threatened. So anyways, for today's question that is now, I mean, do you agree with Samsung dropping the Z from the foldable names? Because honestly, I never understood why it was there in the first place. It helped the name in no way. I mean, like seriously, we never saw the Samsung Galaxy Note be called the Samsung Galaxy S Note. So it makes all the sense in the world for this to just be the Galaxy Fold and Galaxy Flip. But that's just me. Leave us a comment down below. We'd love to know your opinion. Friends, again, if you want to get the news earlier, follow us on pocketnow.com and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one. You can also follow us on social medias. Our extended coverage happens on Instagram and follow me on my personal handles to see me debate the obvious yet again. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I'm Jaime Rivera. Thanks so much for watching. We will see you tomorrow.